Hi everybody, uh, welcome back. After a couple of weeks uh, break from the shed, I've got back to it this week and got on with the 132 scale Mosquito. This is the Tamiya kit. And for part 16, I want to get the airframe painted uh, or at least the camouflage scheme applied. I'm not gonna have time uh, to paint the national insignia. I'm not gonna be using the uh, decals in the Tamiya kit. Uh, so I'll be painting those, but that'll be next time. Uh, this time I've spent uh, probably three hours yesterday masking off uh, all the work that I've done in the cockpit, the bomb bay, the undercarriage and so on. Uh, and that's to make sure that I don't get any overspray at all from the uh, top coats uh, into the work that I've already done. Uh, it's taken a long time to get to this point. Uh, and I don't want to spoil it now. So uh, I've spent quite a bit of time getting the masking done. So the aim this week is to get that camouflage scheme applied. Uh, but before I go and do that, I'll show you how I masked the model off. I used one or two techniques and the Tamiya panels, uh, fixing those into place temporarily uh, to protect the model. So I'll start off by showing you how I did that masking. Uh, and how I've got the model to the state where it's uh, in primer ready for top coat. Okay, so it's uh, time to get this masking done. I've been putting it off uh, for long enough. It's not going to be an easy job to get the model uh, pre fully protected from the paint, all the bits that I've done, the cockpit, engines, uh, the undercarriage bays and uh, the underside bomb bay. They all need protecting. Uh, there's an awful lot of work gone into that and I don't want to get any uh, paint seeping through uh, and spoiling all that work. So I'm going to have to be careful here. I'm going to be using uh, the panels uh, in the Tamiya kit, the loose panels in the Tamiya kit, and I'm going to think of a way of loosely attaching those so that they can be detached uh, after they've been painted. And the reason I do that uh, is because I want to get a consistent finish. If you paint the panel separately, uh, you've got to be very careful not to get a slight difference in tone. And when the panels are fitted uh, later on, you find that you get a patchwork quilt effect. So I like to get all my panels uh, painted together with the rest of the airframe, and then you don't run into that problem. Uh, the difficulty, of course, is to get them to stay on whilst you're doing the painting. So let's make a start. I've got uh, one or two bits and pieces to uh, just prepare. The boarding hatch needs to be removed. I'm going to be displaying the boarding hatch in the open position and it needs various bits of work doing on the inside as well. There's the boarding ladder to fit, the hinge to fit and some decals to go in there as well. I might just prime the inside of that I think before I put it into position. The part is designed to fit in the closed position if you want it to. So it's a really nice snug fit there. That won't allow any paint through, so that'll be okay. And that's the thing that I'm going to be doing all the way around the model. So I'll leave the nose bay cover on. Uh, the top of the engine nacelles, I'll leave these covers on as well. The radiator covers from the inside. Uh, the tricky thing is going to be getting the engine covers uh, to stay on whilst I'm doing the painting. Just spotted a little bit of a gap at the front of the cockpit combing there. So just fill that in. Just going on to the engine cowlings, they need a little bit of work doing to them. There's some parts obviously for the front end of the uh, intake here on the underside and there's one or two other little intakes and bits and pieces to do on the side panels as well. And the magnets need to be fitted or the metal plates. Uh, you remember that we fitted some magnets into the engine 
earlier on in the build and these plates that we're going to fit in here just attract that magnet just to hold the uh, cowlings loosely into position. I think these intakes are going to take a bit of work to clean up. There's a mesh guard to go over the front of this. Tommy, I think, provide that uh, in a clear part, which I'm going to be replacing with some etched brass mesh from the Edwards set. I think that'll look a bit better. Tommy, provide alternative. Uh, lower cowlings for the engines because the third option in the kit is a tropicalized version with a longer intake so you get two sets of under cowlings we're using the shorter intake ones for the uh, European version let's call it that when I get to the painting stage of a big model like this, uh, the priming and painting stage, I always wear gloves. It just prevents last minute deposits of grease from your fingers getting into the plastic and just spoiling the finish. Or it can do, it doesn't always. The cowlings in the Tamiya kit are really very thin plastic. This is the internal duct. I'll show you how it fits on in a moment when I've assembled it. And this is detachable because it won't fit or at least the cowling won't fit, the under cowling won't fit with this in position so there's a magnet provided to remove it. So this part is really, this inner duct is really only if you're displaying the model with the uh, cowlings removed and it just provides a full interior really. The lower cowling has this magnet on the inside. There's a little plate on the underside of the engine that's attracted uh, to that. Clean up the seam on the intake here now. With the intake all cleaned up can get it fitted to the underside cowling now. The side engine cowlings for my version need a little bit of modification which is just to remove two very small pips from the side.
Okay, so that's all the magnets and plates fitted to all these cowlings, so they're ready to uh, put on the aeroplane now, at least to mask the airframe off. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to make sure that all the interiors particularly are primed, and I'll probably do the outsides as well. Uh, I don't want to add lots of primer to the interior once I've got the exterior paint finish that I want. Just an extra risk of overspray I suppose so I'll get all these primed up. It'll also enable me to check for seams as well on these intakes. They look alright but a coat of primer will just make sure of that. Uh, and then we can go ahead and do the masking. Okay all the cowling parts are primed now. Uh, inside and out. The intakes come out really nicely. I've got the seam removed from that. And they're a really quite a nice fit. There's a gap on the uh, inside, but I'm not bothered about that really. It's covered by the uh, intake that I built earlier on. And actually for cowlings off the aeroplane, I've got a full set from the Edward Brassing engine set. And they're a little bit more detailed than these, so uh, these really are never going to be displayed off the aircraft. So to get all this uh, masked up now, I've used a combination. I've already done the port side uh, engine cowling. And you can see I've masked off the uh, undercarriage legs, not the undercarriage bay yet, I've just done the undercarriage legs. And I've used uh, some cling film some food wrap for that. It's a really good material for masking off uh, because it's very flexible, uh, it doesn't put any stress on the parts uh, and it gives a really good seal. Or at least that's the theory. The cowlings are held on with uh, magnets as provided by Tamiya but I've also uh, used some mascol here at the front as a kind of glue really and it's also sealed the uh, front edge of the cowlings off. I've also masked off the inside of the exhaust outlets on these side cowlings. Uh, I've not fitted the uh, exhaust yet obviously. I'm glad I didn't fit them really because it would have uh, made that job a little bit more difficult just a line of tape along the back of the cowling there and that's all sealed off. So hopefully, uh, with the exception of the undercarriage bay, which I'll come to later, that port side is uh, ready for a bit of paint. I'll do the starboard engine now on camera. So first up, I'm going to just seal off this exhaust. Make sure that's properly pressed down all the way around, so nothing's going to get in there. That's just using mascol there as a temporary glue. It'll just pull away when I come to remove these cowlings after the paintwork's been done. But it's just strong enough to hold uh, the cowling side in position. And what I've done uh, as well with these is to just dry the mascol off quickly with the hairdryer. So uh, I'll do that now.
Next I've got some uh, cling film just to wrap around the undercarriage leg. Obviously it's very flexible so you can uh, get it exactly where you want it. Go around a couple of times just to make sure and I'll use a little bit of tape as well. That's uh, all covered up. And with the leg covered up, I can just push the lower cowl in. I'm going to have to be careful about getting the paint onto the lower cowl because it's very close to the undercarriage leg. It's very difficult to manoeuvre the model, especially for filming, it's not easy, so apologies if the camera goes a bit off. But obviously I've got to concentrate on the model first and foremost, it's very difficult to do both sometimes. Okay, we'll do the wheelbase now. Well, I think that's done it. It's pretty difficult to tell really. And I'm going to be spraying the top coats on pretty carefully as well. So uh, I'm not going to be getting paint everywhere. I'll just be careful with the airbrush and go up to the edges. So hopefully that'll do the job. I'll do the other bay now, then we'll come back and mask off all the underside of the aircraft here, the cannon and bomb bay. The chattering and twittering you can hear in the background are swallows. They came back uh, from the migration. They were a bit early actually, they got here in uh, April. So they've been with us probably three or four weeks now. And they're busy rebuilding the nests that they left. They departed in about September time. And they're remarkable little creatures, really, to think that they travel all the way from South Africa, the ones that come up here anyway. 
so thousands of miles and they return to the same porch in our house that they left as I said last September I think they travel something like 120 miles a day on their migration all the way up the west coast of Africa across uh, the Straits of Gibraltar up through Spain across the Channel and up to us in the north of England so it's nice to have them back I had one fly into the shed last week but fortunately I managed to rescue him before he managed to do any damage The uh, mosquito was safely covered up. Even so, you don't really want swallows flying around. So I'm not looking to get into every part of the Bombay because I'm just going to be painting just up to the edge use the airbrush on a fine needle setting uh, so I'm not going to be hosing the paint on so I think that that should be uh, sufficient the last thing to do is the tailwheel bay we'll just block this hole up at the back with some foam Notice I've removed the tailwheel leg, that just gives, uh, makes it a little bit easier to get this area masked off. Okay, I think that's uh, good enough. Just check that I've not forgotten anything. I've done the radiator intakes. And that's it. I think we're ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a very light coat of primer all the way around the airframe. I'm not too fussed about the nose machine guns because I can easily repaint them afterwards once I've got the camouflage on but I will try and protect what I've done. Not the easiest things to uh, mask off, really. That'll do. Uh, I'm not going to fuss over that too much, as I said. Okay, so let's get uh, a little cut of primer on. That'll just give me a uh, chance to check the work that I've done. Any joints, I think it'll be okay. Uh, but I'll just make sure. You'll notice that I haven't fitted the canopy at this stage. Normally I would because, as I said earlier on in the uh, video, I wanted to make sure that I get all the tones the same uh, on the paintwork. But in the case of the canopy, I am going to leave it off and paint it separately. Uh, and hopefully I'll get a decent match. That's just because I don't want to be fitting it and taking it off uh, to fit the internals on it. Uh, so I just think all things being equal I'd rather leave it off and paint it separately see how we get on with that okay so I'll go over and get this primer on and we'll take a look at uh, whether or not we need to do any more work on the uh, airframe okay so the airframe has been primed now and that's gone on really nicely I used Mr Surfacer 1200 for the primer and I thinned that about 50% with uh, Mr. Hobby uh, lacquer thinners. Uh, and I use the self leveling type, uh, which uh, just gives a slightly better finish, I think, than the standard thinners. So that's gone on really well. I've not got too much bits of dust on the surface, uh, but just to make sure, I like to just run around the uh, paint surface with some micro mesh. This is 4000 grade micro mesh and it's pretty old now uh, So it probably is a bit finer than 4000 actually uh, But what 
that enables you to do is just to remove any bits of dust in the paint surface and just make sure that you've got a perfectly smooth finish ready for the top coats. The finer grades of micro mesh uh, just do that polishing job really. Uh, they don't cut through the paint and you don't want that. You want to retain the primer. Applying the primer on uh, any model really, uh, I just find it the best way of checking or doing a final check uh, for any seams, any gaps, any imperfections in the build. Uh, and that just gives you time to correct that uh, before you apply any top coats. In this particular case, um, I didn't have much work to do. The only job that I've fixed is uh, some scratches on the top of the port wing here, uh, where I removed some blue spots, I think it was. Uh, and I used a slightly heavy grade of wet and dry to do that. And it just left one or two scratches in the surface and they will come out in the top coats uh, and the varnish coats so uh, it was important to get rid of those so the micro mesh came in i applied another coat of primer over the top of that and those scratches have disappeared so we're now ready to do the painting and uh, the sequence for this is that i'm going to be doing some pre-shading with some dark gray uh, and black and browns just to add a bit of tonal variation to the surface on a big model like this uh, particularly with a big wingspan a big expanse of smooth wing there's very few panel lines in it uh, i don't want a perfectly uniform finish i want to uh, mix it up a little bit particularly on the tops of the wings uh, around the nacelles and around the areas where there would be staining from the machine guns and the cannons on the underside and obviously on top of the wings here around the fuel fillers and the tops of the radiators and the top cowlings here uh, the footfall of the uh, maintenance personnel would have been heaviest in this sort of midsection area so I'll be applying the uh, pre-weathering uh, a little bit more heavily in that area the rest of the surfaces the outer wings and the fuselage being perfectly smooth there's very few panel lines in this uh, airframe so I'm not going to be going too heavily with the uh, pre-shading on those plywood type areas so we'll make a start let's see how we get on I always find that when I'm painting a large model like this that I tend to go backwards and forwards with the colors uh, and add a little bit of post shading as well just to get it uh, how I want it uh, so we'll make a start and we'll see how we get on with it so here we go, I'm going to start with some uh, Tamiya acrylic rubber black uh, and I'm going to be wearing a mask for all the painting sequences so uh, I'm not going to be speaking at that point uh, but it should be fairly obvious what's going on.
Okay, all the pre-shade done. I might have to come back and do a little bit of post-shading. Uh, just a note about these templates that I used then to create this random uh, pattern. These are uh, a Yushi van der Rosten templates and they come in a pack of uh, three different sizes. They're called Trinity Splatter. I think actually there's another set uh, from what I can remember that do slightly different patterns as well. And it's just much quicker using those templates, these splatter templates, rather than airbrushing a random pattern. Uh, it's possible to do it, but it doesn't have quite the hard edge, or you'd have to be really skilled with the airbrush, certainly more skilled than I am, to get this sort of random uh, tight edged pattern uh, with a airbrush just on its own. So uh, that's my first experiment with the splatter templates. So it'll be interesting to see how they contribute to the final finish of the uh, aeroplane. So for the top coats, I'm going to be using Tamiya acrylic. This is XF83 medium sea grey and XF81 dark green, RAF dark green. I think these are relatively new additions to the Tamiya range. They've been out a few years, but uh, they're relatively new. Uh, and I like them. I think they give a really nice representation of the camouflage scheme applied to this aircraft. So I'm going to start off with the medium sea grey. That goes on the undersurface as well. Uh, and then I'll just apply the relatively simple... Uh, green camouflage overlay for that as well. Okay, so that's the first attempt at the medium uh, sea grey. And you can see at this stage I've removed the flaps. Temporarily at any rate. And that's just so that I can get onto the sides of the fuselage here. The flaps uh, were obstructing that a little bit. Uh, so they've had to come off and I might refit them uh, to do the green, which is the next step. You'll notice that I've avoided painting the green areas uh, and that's so that I retain the model pattern, the uh, base coat that I put on uh, rather than have to do it again. So now I'm going to apply the uh, disruptive camouflage which is RAF dark green which I'm going to be using this XF81 for. 
Okay, so uh, looking at the Tamiya painting guide here for this particular aircraft, uh, it does suggest that the camouflage demarcation is fairly soft edged. But when you look at photographs uh, of this squadron's aircraft, and there's a close up of the side of the fuselage of this particular aircraft in a couple of photographs, you can see that the camouflage demarcation is fairly tight. So I'm going to be using some rolled up uh, blue tack worms, if you like, just to give me a slightly softened edge, but uh, not completely. And the demarcation here, uh, along the side of the fuselage, uh, I'm going to be doing hard edge, so I'm going to be using some tape for that. The location of this particular uh, section of green is fairly important because we've got the uh, squadron codes over the top of it and the photographs also tell us exactly where this demarcation is in relation to the F of the squadron code. So I'm going to try and uh, meet that when I do the masking off. Now yesterday I applied the tape a little bit too soon I think and I actually pulled a section of the grey away so I'm going to be a bit cautious uh, with this tape and one way to reduce the possibility of uh, damaging the paint surface with tape is just to take some of the tack off it like that. <clears throat> so to do this I'm just going to apply a piece of tape parallel to this uh, strake. The Camouflage demarcation follows that, it's parallel to it. So that's just an indicator, because when I put my actual piece of tape on, uh, you can't see this strake, so it would be easier just to wander off a little bit. So that uh, piece of guiding tape uh, just makes sure that we're going to get this absolutely parallel to the strake. Because I've got this reference point of this strake for this uh, starboard side demarcation, uh, it's given me the position of the port side because there are no references really on the port side. It's perfectly smooth. So uh, having that on the starboard is useful. There's a hard edge around the base of the fin which follows the fillet really. So I'm using the decals again, or a photocopy of them. And that's just going to give me the uh, demarcation mark for the green. Okay, that's as much of the hard masking as I can do now. I'm just doing a section at a time, so I'll get the tail painted first. Then I can remove the masking tape and move on to the next section. I'll be uh, spraying it at just about 12 PSI, something like that, nice and gentle. And the paint's mixed pretty thinly. Uh, I usually do Tamiya acrylics at about 50% uh, paint to thinners. And I'm using Tamiya's Retarder Thinners for this, just to uh, let it dry a bit more slowly.
Okay, so that's the uh, first pass with the green. It's going to need some touching up. You can see here, and there's one or two other places where I've got the demarcation slightly wrong in the wrong position. So I've got this uh, gap here between the grey and the green. I'm going to have to go back in with the grey just to bring it up to the correct position. There's one or two other bits of touch up. I've got some paint tear here on this strake. Uh, as I did yesterday, whether or not I've not uh, got the primer right or the model's been dirty. Maybe some grease on my fingers or something like that. Uh, but that's going to be easily repaired. Just see if we can get this off without any damage. Before I put the green away, I just want to match the camouflage up onto the flaps. Okay, so they're all done. I can just now go back and fix uh, this uh, mistake on the uh, grey camouflage here. One or two other little bits of touch up. Then I think we're done. I think we'll be ready then just to give the model a very light uh, coat of gloss varnish. I'm not going to go overboard with it. Uh, as I said earlier on in the video, I'm not going to be using the Tamiya decals uh, for this particular model. So I've just got some really good quality stencils from Barracuda Cals, so they should go on fine. They'll just need a very light coat of uh, gloss varnish to go down okay. Uh, so that'll be uh, done, ready for next week when we can move on and we'll get the national insignia done and finish off the painting on this one. Okay, so uh, back to it this week and I've got to where I wanted to be really with the camouflage scheme applied. I've still got some uh, touch-ups here and there to do uh, but I've run out of time this week uh, to show you those but you can get an impression of what the uh, aeroplane is going to look like. Next week in part 17 I'm going to be applying the national insignia and the squadron codes and so on using the Montex mask set that I've got for this particular model. That's because I don't really want to use the Tamiya decals. They've got a reputation for being uh, pretty thick. They're not the best quality. So uh, I'm going to be using the Montex masks for the main uh, markings. And I've got a set of Barracuda Cal's stencils as well, which will be much better than the Tamiya equivalent. So I'll be doing that next week. I need to just protect this with a coat of gloss varnish, but I'll do that off camera uh, and we'll be ready to go with that next time. And hopefully just another couple of episodes will see this uh, model finished. So we're back into the swing of it now and back with the Friday night premieres. Uh, the next one, next Friday night, part 17, uh, 8 o'clock. So hopefully I'll see you then. In the meantime, look after yourselves, everybody. Stay safe and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.